will welcome uh, David Dono and Matti on stage. Uh, David is an experienced manager with a demonstrated history of uh, working in uh, international investment and the technology industry. And uh, today he is the investor relations team lead at uh, Estate Guru. Dono is a real estate consultant and analyst with a long time experience. Uh, he is an investor, entrepreneur, uh, trainer and publisher. And uh, last but not least uh, is uh, Matti, who is an uh, investor and estate guru's uh, country head in Finland. And uh, now, without further ado, uh, let's welcome uh, David Musu, Tönu Tombark and Matti Vanseen, please. As the name suggests, we will be talking today about uh, bulletproof investment strategies. And as I understand, you're all experts in real estate. So most likely, you will all be talking about bulletproof, uh, how to bulletproof uh, your investment portfolios and strategies with real estate. So my first question for you is, what actually makes real estate more bulletproof as an investment as, I don't know, let's say stocks or bonds or, or anything else? Maybe. We can. Uh, is real estate bulletproof? Maybe it should be rocketproof, uh, considering that uh, there is war uh, ongoing. And uh, I don't think uh, real estate is bulletproof. Uh, there are always uh, risks when we are talking about uh, investments. Uh, we can't uh, avoid uh, risks. So real estate is investment opportunity like shares and it's uh, not better and definitely it's uh, not uh, worse. David? Yeah, I guess it's um, yeah, obviously nothing is bulletproof, right? But historically, if you look at how the uh, real estate has performed internationally, it's always been a lot more stable than other assets. So maybe it doesn't have the highs that you would expect from uh, cryptocurrencies or stocks, but at the same time, it's something that's a bit more um, predictable. So you can build a more um, kind of, you can uh, kind of build uh, your expectations a lot more strongly to what you're, uh, you're trying to achieve, yeah. I think. Yeah, <clears throat> I would say that uh, comparing to stocks, stocks, they usually fluctuate quite a lot with crises. For example, dot-com bubble, many stocks came down with 97, 98% even. Uh, if we look at the, the history, especially in Finland, because I, I, I don't know about real estate market in other countries, but Finland, uh, the recession in, in 1990s, uh, the real estate prices came down less than 20%, uh, mostly like 15% or even less. Uh, in the tw 2008, less than 10%. So although during this period, interest rates even have been higher in the 1990s, 18% per year. Uh, in the 2012, for example, like... Uh, I think it was uh, more than two, uh, one or two percent per year Euribor, for example. Uh, yet the, the the prices of real estates have like gradually come up, like one to two percent per year or something like that. So no skyrocketing. You shouldn't expect that from uh, real estate investments. But it's stable. That's how I see it as a stable asset class. But do you see real estate prices only going up? There is a lot of discussions no, here in not, Estonia as well. No, not not only. Uh, I think like uh, not like. It's not about only going up, but uh, being like stable, being at the zero level, but not, not probably not that much going down either. Uh, maybe they can come down a bit. Uh, and I think that's a natural cause from higher interest rates. And I, I only consider that being a good thing. That's why at least I have money in the back pocket just and, and under the pillow just waiting for uh, prices to crash a bit so I buy a bit more. So you don't see uh, real estate as, uh, as, a, as a growth portfolio or as a growth, in, growth investment, but more as like a stable uh, income generating investment, or how do you see real estate in that sense? When we are talking about last year, uh, in May, Tallinn uh, average uh, apartment tra transaction price was 30% uh, higher than uh, previous year. 
uh, new apartments, uh, their prices in, uh, sorry, not uh, about May, in uh, June. Mm. Uh, new apartments prices are 35 percent higher uh, than a year ago. If this is not growth uh, investment, what is, what is growth investment? So it's uh, it's not so stable in Estonia. There are a few stable things. Uh, one thing is stable, that nothing is stable. Uh, but uh, but uh, more or less, uh, cash flow is important. Uh, really stable uh, and predictable uh, income from uh, properties. David, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I share the same thoughts in the sense that it is, well, you can see it as a growth portfolio, right? If you are able also to invest in different properties and you are able to compound your investments over time, that is, uh, you know, you're basically looking to build wealth over time rather than just hope that something that spikes up overnight, you know, and then you risk losing everything. So it's a lot more stable and predictable way of actually building wealth over time. It's funny that uh, Tuno mentioned that uh, real estate prices have only gone up. In Estonia, I noticed that uh, in Sweden, for example, real estate prices have started to come down a little bit, not too much, but still. So it's yeah, maybe not the fully growth uh, investment, but yeah, it's stable uh, quite enough. Uh, but um, how do you see uh, the interest, uh, the rise of interest rates uh, affecting the real estate market and real estate investments? How? Have investors taken this into account uh, with their in initial in the investments, or how, how do you see the current situation, or is this uh, an opportunity maybe to to start investing actually? Well, from our perspective, it's an opportunity, right? Of course, if there's uh, higher interest rates being offered to the investors, then that makes it a lot more attractive, especially in a time where there's turmoil in the market, right? So you don't really know what to expect, and you're as likely to, uh, let's say, uh, gain wealth as much as you are to lose it right now in other uh, different asset classes. So it's certainly an advantage, I would say. I'd say, oh, talking only about the interest rates, it's not important because uh, uh, rents are higher, property prices are higher. But uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, higher uh, interest rates, we are talking about uh, all-time uh, low consumer confidence. We are talking about uh, uh, 22 percent inflation rate. We are talking uh, about unpredictably high energy prices. Then definitely there uh, will be less demand on the market uh, this year. Next year, uh, less demand means uh, less uh, transactions. Less transactions uh, means. Uh, no price increase or decline in prices. We don't know. It's very difficult uh, to predict. Yeah. Uh, to add, actually, here, those are, those are exactly the points that I also <laughs> would, would mention. Uh, the thing is that, especially, I, I, again, I speak about Finland, is that uh, banks, for example, have been even more cautious uh, di already during the COVID per period, but now after the war has started. Uh, and I have even personal experience about this. Uh, which means that uh, banks, in that sense, are, are the, I would say, even the initiator of, of demand and supply. Uh, because if, if they don't give the financing for people to buy apartments, uh, there will be less and less apartments for sale and so on, uh, and people cannot buy them, which means that um, may, maybe the prices might come down a bit. Uh, so th that's what we are expecting, in, in a sense. And regarding the, the actual previous question as well, like uh, in, in Estonia, the prices of, of like real estates have come up like really a lot. In Finland, on average, they have come up uh, for the past, I think, 12 years, 1.6% uh, per year. Of course, depending on the region, there are certain regions where you can probably make a quicker profit, uh, but uh, the most like common Common increase is just like uh, uh, inflation corrected <laughs> increase usually. Mm. Uh, short remark. Uh, loan terms in, in Estonia have been the same as uh, they were a uh, year ago or uh, two uh, years ago. I'm talking about my personal experience and interest rate of housing loans in May was uh, uh, one point. Uh, 1.9% uh, uh, and previous uh, months of uh, this year it has been 2%. Same. No, no changes in loan terms in Estonia. And, and uh, what we actually, th this is good that you uh, brought it up 
up because we just had a good discussion of this uh, in the green room. Uh, and um, what I mentioned in Finland, uh, regular, like of course, banks are offering the margin, and, and then usually, like nowadays, they don't offer any more three or six months Euribor, but they are offering the 12 month Euribor. But the regular margin in Finland is like 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Uh, just as an example, like uh, like right in the middle of Helsing, not in the city center, uh, our current apartment, we have a margin of 0 0.3, uh, which means that uh, banks trust the region or whatever, how they assess their risk, I don't know. Uh, but the thing is that now I, I have heard from my friends as well and, and people uh, in the industry that now they have started increasing the, the margins. And especially when, when Estate Group, for example, is uh, operating in, in uh, uh, company financing. So company financing uh, is something that the banks have, have now like st started to tone down once more. They have already tried to dump their corporate balance sheets for five years. Now they are making less and less financing and increasing the interest rates. Uh, and a regular interest rate for um, a company to acquire financing is something like 2%, usually plus Euribor or something like that, uh, which means uh, that if they are increasing those interest rates, it's actually getting closer to estate guru interest rates. And then the borrower, for example, has to make the, the, the call whether to use the bank financing. Uh, and, and I can tell you from my own experience that the, the decisions from banks currently are two to three months. I just called to Danske Bank yesterday, and they said that, yeah, we are now dealing with uh, applications that have come in 18th of May, and we are in July, right? So that means that they, they are packed. They don't want to make those decisions. They don't want to give out the money currently because they are also actually in the situation that they, they don't know what, what's going to happen. Uh, so therefore, like, I think the, the interest rates are like, they, maybe they won't be in parity for, for a short period of time, but they are closing the estate guru interest rates. And, and one of our benefits is that we can make those decisions quite, quite quickly uh, with the, almost the same terms in a sense. But uh, with uh, rising interest rates, uh, less, less people or less companies are able to invest in real estate. But this, this means that uh, there's less competition. So it's probably a better time to make uh, wise decisions in real estate, I guess, because you don't have to rush into something. You can uh, really uh, look at the Excel, whether the numbers match or not. Uh, it's, it's a bit more expensive, but if you're, if you're more wealthier and you can afford it, then you at least have some time now, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, w one thing that I'd like to mention, like I, I think the if we are talking about the real estate investing market and not not only like the housing market uh, for for regular consumers, like uh, those sophisticated company investors, for example, they most probably have taken into account the the increase of interest rates uh, and and they can adjust to it. Maybe they can, they can hedge it somehow. But a regular like uh, investor, like a regular person who is buying a part, uh, investment apartment or two just to put it for, for rent, that is, first of all, banks are, as mentioned, uh, tightening their conditions. But the second thing is that in Finland, as we have the housing company system, uh, most of the housing companies, wh whenever uh, like a, a building is being developed, uh, then they are selling the apartment. Let's say that it's 200 k It might be that 150 k of that is housing company loan. So they have to only uh, put 50,000 there, and they don't even have to negotiate with banks anymore because they, they just can buy it with the housing company loan and plus the 50,000, and they pay the housing company loan for uh, 12, 20 years. I know several people, even investors, uh, that have said that yeah, well, I. I the 50, 000, like I paid 10,000 of my own money, and then I borrowed like 40,000 like consumer credit or something like that just in order to get the apartment. And I'm, I'm like, hmm, well, that's not smart, because thinking about the interest rates, and, and then like uh, if, if several people have done this, and, and quite a lot of people have, it means that at some point there will be a price reduction in that kind of apartments, because there will be several people uh, who ha has their like uh, house of cards falling down because they have like so leveraged positions and they have not taken into account that I can promise. I know several people who have said that whenever the, the amortization starts, because usually there's like two to four years of, of uh, amortization that, that they don't have to amortize, there's like, yeah, it's the uh, problem of that time. Well, uh, maybe you should take that into account, but they haven't. 
but uh, Tuno here at the start mentioned that uh, you know, buildings need to be rocket proof uh, today. Um, people are worried because uh, both Finland and Estonia and many other countries are uh, next door to a particular country. Uh, and many people are afraid to if, uh, invest in real estate, either because of this or because of uh, fears of economic decline or, or at least uh, some cool down. Uh, so is, is now a good time to invest in real estate is, is what many people are thinking. What, what do you say? Is now a good time or should people uh, wait for, I don't know, a few months, a year, two years? Uh, I'd say that is never a good time. Uh, the price is too high or uh, loan conditions are uh, too tight. Uh, uh, time is never uh, good. It uh, is important uh, to start to, to make uh, the first uh, uh, step. Is it uh, right now uh, the best time to invest in Estonian uh, real estate? Probably not uh, one year ago. It was much better time. But is uh, the worst time uh, right now? Difficult to say because high inf inflation rate, uh, low consumer confidence, uh, them, uh, them factors. Uh, and the prices are high, but uh, uh, materials, building materials prices are also up. Uh, uh, wages are going uh, up in Estonia quite uh, quickly. Prognosis are 7 8% uh, per year. Uh, th that's much lower than inflation rate, of course. So, but I know this is uh, totally the same uh, uh, talk uh, what was in 2008. Uh, no, no, real estate can't uh, uh, fall, uh, and then only 50%, 50, not 15, 50. <laughs> it was Estonian case. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, you can say it's uh, it's it's never a good time, or it's always a good time, likewise, right? Um, it really, I think, you need to kind of also ask what's going on around you, right? And right now, for example, with inflation going up, can you really afford not to invest? Are you willing to take that hit? So it's all about kind of finding the opportunity that there is. And as uh, Tony is saying, it's it's really <laughs> in the decisions that you make, not the necessarily the right exact time, because otherwise you're always going to keep on waiting for that time. And when it hits you, you're not going to actually realize that now is actually the time. You're always going to think there's a better time. Maybe there are, maybe most probably there are less buyers on the market uh, to th in 2022 and uh, next year. But uh, demand side, there are buying demand and uh, rental demand. We have 40,000 Ukrainian refugees in Estonia. This is also demand, part of demand, and uh, mostly on the uh, uh, rental market. Uh, last year, uh, uh, I'd say that uh, pro approximately 25% of uh, apartment transactions in Tallinn were uh, made by real estate investors. Uh, uh, I, I believe that there are less investors on the market in the near future during uh, one, two years, but uh, their uh, purchases are bigger. Uh, uh, so the investors are in buying side. I would say about, let's say, time the market, a uh, couple of uh, chosen words. First of all, as usually I, I talk about more about general investments, not only about real estate investing. investing. I, I see timing of the market like as a Schrodinger's cat. Either the cat is dead or not. You, you cannot know it. Uh, you, like always, if you think about stocks, uh, and it's, I, think, I think the same applies in real estate, the best time was probably yesterday, probably 2008. I didn't have money then. Uh, like, uh, always you can buy the dip uh, and you can sell high, but how many here have, have done that 10 time, con con uh, consecutive times? Probably none of us. Otherwise, we would have a lot more uh, millionaires and billionaires here, uh, which means that Timing the market is always difficult. Then, therefore, like uh, buying in the decreasing market, that, that's the main thing, and trying to sell with a profit, or even better, just hold. Buy when you believe that, okay, the, the substance price is okay, and hold, hold it for 40 years. Because if you think about any, uh, any of the asset, asset classes, for example, 
uh, like especially that kind of that are not fully cyclical or something like that. Uh, stocks, if you have invested in uh, 1940s in the US stocks, probably you'll be a billionaire right now. If you have invested in real estate in 1990s in Finland, probably you'll be a millionaire right now. Which means that timing the market, uh, that there's always the time factor. Uh, like you're always right or wrong or something in between. It's not uh, black and white. I'd say that it's much more easier to give advice even today to buy a home. There are 30 years uh, loan agreement, uh, low interest rate, and uh, uh, people are buying a home because of uh, their needs. But uh, it's uh, not so easy to give advice to invest uh, uh, right now into real estate in Estonia. We have a uh, uh, terrorist government uh, uh, behind the border, and uh, I'm not talking about Latvia or uh, Finland. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, and uh, lo lo loan agreements, uh, when investing in uh, real estate, uh, loan agreements are five years uh, agreements, and uh, economic situation is uh, fragile. Um, well, part of a diverse, diversified or bulletproof uh, portfolio is diversification. Uh, it's quite difficult to do in real estate, but it's still possible. So in Estonia, the real estate prices are quite high. It's maybe difficult to buy something. In Finland, maybe it's a bit easier, maybe not too much. But uh, how should, should actually should investors uh, start looking to other countries? And uh, if so, where and how should they should they manage uh, this? Because you know, if you buy a property in Spain, it's quite difficult to manage it. Maybe. Well, <clears throat> that's where estate guru comes in, right? <laughs> um, uh, yes, of course you should diversify, right? And usually, like you can, you know, you can get lucky and, and have a good win. You know, obviously, if you plan things ahead and really do your research and you you spend a lot of time finding your properties, then you can put all your uh, cards on you know one bet basically, but it's much better to just diversify across different properties, different types of properties, and also different countries, right? So, um, and and uh, I guess the the most bulletproof way of doing that is to really spread your investment in as many different properties as you can, provided you can afford them and you have the tools to do so. And through Asset Guru, you can you can do that. You can invest in small tickets in different properties and spread those across different countries in Europe, so that if there's a risk, particular risk in in uh, Finland and in Estonia, due to the geopolitical kind of situation, then you can always look at UK, Germany, uh, Spain, where it's a bit more distance uh, from, from these countries. When we are talking about bigger investments, uh, then diver uh, diversification is uh, much more important. When I am talking about private person who has maybe five apartments, it's easier to manage uh, where, uh, when uh, these apartments are together, not have uh, five different apartments uh, uh, in different locations, but in uh, one building, much uh, easier. Uh, one way to uh, diversify portfolio is to invest uh, through stocks, F10, Baltic Horizon, for example, uh, that, uh, that is uh, what I am doing. Yeah. One thing is that, let's say that if, if I were to even think about uh, buying an apartment in Spain, well, I wouldn't. Uh, the main reason is that uh, like, I don't know the countries. I don't invest, for example, in anything that I don't know and fully trust, uh, which means that I don't know Spain. I don't know even Estonia that well, uh, which means that uh, the, the, I think the only way that it should be done is that you have a local expertise, right? So if I were to invest in Estonia, nowadays I have a, a few friends here and uh, colleagues that I can contact and ask that this is a valid investment or can you find me a valid investment. Uh, the second thing is that, uh, as, as David also mentioned, like for example, Estate Guru's product is uh, good in that. We have presence in all of those countries. Those are carefully selected by the local experts. Uh, which means that you can diversify. And I, again, like buying an apartment in, uh, if I would have five apartments, for example, and I would buy one in Spain and, and one in, in Tallinn or whatever, it's, it's already a hassle. Uh, like if I have to find a new tenant, I have to probably myself go there or, or either uh, in the worst case scenarios get, get scammed because I'm not there uh, physically. Uh, so therefore, uh, having like a cross-border platform or investing through like 
rates or something like that to the other countries. I think that that is the most smartest way to do because then you can you are actually in a sense paying for for the local expertise uh, who are uh, like taking care of your investments in those countries. Uh, yeah, the, my next question was about uh, because uh, real estate is really expensive and how to how to uh, find the capital or how, how to uh, purchase uh, real estate. I, I think re uh, rates are one great option, but uh, are there any other ways to, to find capital to, to purchase uh, properties, for, let's say like real properties for yourself or, or maybe some other solutions as well? Yeah, well, I can comment quickly that, for example, if you're an Estonian and want to buy an apartment in Finland, most probably, probably the bank will not finance you. If you're a Spanish person and come to Finland and want to buy an apartment, most probably the bank won't finance you, which means that uh, either you have to have it under your pillow already, the, the funds ready, uh, or you have to find a financer, uh, external financer or like a fund or something like that. So that, that's what the, the bigger funds, for example, in Finland, in Tallinn and uh, elsewhere are doing. They, they have their own funds or they have collected it with, with bonds or whatever, uh, and they are using that, those funds. But uh, Trying to even utilize the local banks uh, as a foreigner, well, good good luck with that. Yeah, I mean, not pretty much to add to that, but uh, I mean, it depends on how you look at it, right? If yeah, you're trying to buy a place for yourself, then it's going to be very challenging to do that outside of the <clears throat> native country where you're at, or unless you've lived there for a certain amount of uh, years. But if you're trying to, uh, let's say, get started in real estate investments without actually having the capital or being able to get the capital to buy a property yourself, then platforms such as Estate Guru give you the opportunity to actually put smaller investments together with other investors and you kind of pool those to different uh, loans, whether in a location where you're at or abroad. So. How to start uh, real estate investment, uh, uh, how to uh, save capital, one option is to start uh, saving. Uh, why not through estate guru, uh, through stocks, uh, rates, uh, so on. Uh, all, or uh, one option is to find uh, partners to make investments together. It's a quicker uh, way to collect the money or uh, buy cheaper properties outside uh, metropol uh, metropoles, outside uh, Tallinn and Tartu, when we are talking about uh, uh, Estonia. Uh, maybe these uh, these are options. There's really good uh, points. Uh, I would like to go uh, to both of them. Let's maybe start with uh, f uh, finding uh, friends or or either other people with the same interests. And in how is it possible to to find other investors who you can really work with? Because you know, once you go into business together, uh, you have to be really sure that your mindsets are similar, your goals are, are similar, because uh, you know problems will arise. So we have to be ready for them. So how, how can you find people with uh, similar mindsets? It is important to talk with the people. Uh, audience, please uh, uh, give a sign who is uh, willing to invest in real estate, who wants to invest in real estate. Oh. Talk, talk with each other. other. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. So uh, when we have a break, uh, definitely talk to each other. Basically, everybody raised their hands. So uh, yeah. just go to anybody. <laughs> Um, like quick, quick uh, comment yeah. also on that, as mentioned, like uh, you can find uh, the right people in uh, events like this. You you yeah. probably have a friend or a friend of a friend, uh, and, and you can ask uh, people to connect you as well. And the second thing, uh, as you mentioned, that problems will arise. Well, there's uh, ways of mitigating those problems, and one is doing proper contracts <laughs> to, to lobby the thing mm. as a lawyer. But that, but that is true. Like a mo uh, I have to remind that most of uh, part of, of the the disputes, it's not about someone being uh, a fraudster or something like that, or, or being uh, like uh, a bad person. It's about diff understanding the same issue or same thing differently. And, and by aligning those things in a written agreement already in beforehand, you can mitigate most part of the risk because then you acknowledge that you think about, about the matter the same way. Mm -hmm. And there are also communities in uh, Facebook, for example, uh, 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 where uh, it's possible to find uh, uh, 
people who are interested in uh, investing in real estate. Uh, now coming to the second uh, issue you raised, or not issue, but uh, <laughs> the opportunity, uh, investing in areas uh, outside of the capital or one or two bigger cities. Um, what are the current uh, options, let's say in Estonia and in Finland, uh, wh wh what are the best cities to, to invest in where you see that people uh, are still interested in maybe the population is actually increasing or at least uh, is decreasing quite slowly. So what, what are the best uh, places to invest right now uh, outside of Tallinn Tartu and Helsinki? Uh, maybe. Uh, I can start. Uh, uh, outside Tallinn Tartu, Pärnu, <laughs> other any towns. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, this uh, factor, uh, population increasing or not, this is uh, re really important. But the uh, real estate market is hot uh, right now everywhere in Estonia. Also in rural, uh, rural areas, also in uh, uh, smaller um, uh, towns. And uh, prices have uh, gone uh, up uh, very fast, even uh, quicker than in Tallinn, where price increase, annual price increase is 30 percent, because it's uh, much easy, easier to uh, uh, get the extra 50 percent to the price when the uh, uh, initial price is uh, very, very low. So uh, uh, buying market is hot everywhere, and uh, rental market also. But uh, Okay. Of course, uh, properties are cheaper outside Tallinn Tartu Pärnu, but uh, I'd say uh, decline in prices is possible. Uh, I'm not sure it's coming, but it's possible. And it starts uh, in areas uh, where uh, uh, there is uh, less uh, demand in uh, smaller towns or uh, rural areas. But uh, what are the cities? So it, uh, they want uh, well, the railway. Uh, look, uh, look at uh, railway. Look at uh, rail, uh, rail Baltic. I, I remember uh, Christian Tamla from Eften saying that uh, yes, one, one option is the railway. Look at railway, and also the golden circle around Tallinn is also increasing. So it's about two, two sixty kilometers. So mm -hmm. it's not Tallinn, but maybe let's say Rapla and, and yeah. other smaller cities like. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, can't you say, yeah, like, like you said, no, no other cities outside Tallinn and Tartu. So, but yeah, a lot of Keila, also, Keila, uh, Keila, Keila, Keila. is also a very popular. Uh, Sawa is also quite expensive already. So, but mm -hmm. yes, there are many, many places around mm -hmm. Tallinn as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Loxa. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, maybe what about Finland? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I was going to say that uh, look at the outskirts, the neighborhoods that are the outskirts of cities, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what we've been seeing, especially since COVID emerged, is also a lot of jobs now have become more remote. So people are more willing to kind of take a place to live outside of the city where it's become so expensive. And so this trend also with the immigration that we're seeing is raising the demand outside of the city center where it's you know, you're more peaceful, you have a place that's not so maybe hectic and there's better value in the property that you can get. So that's what I would bet on. Yeah, well, uh, not, not to be too specific on the cities because I, I, I guess that for 98% of, of the audience even, or even to in this, <laughs> this panel, most of the cities in Finland don't say anything. Uh, so I, I, my, my recommendation is always, of course, the, the capital region, like, uh, the, like uh, as we say, the Sur Pääkaupunkiseltu, which is like uh, the smaller cities near Helsinki, uh, Espoo, Vantaa, Järven, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then uh, university cities, uh, you can Google all of them by Googling University Finland and check all of those. Uh, most probably you will find, find all of the cities. There are like, I, I think, uh, about 15 of those. Uh, and, and then, uh, just as a comparison and, and talking about price declining, price increasing and so on, uh, you got to remember that there are cities, uh, especially in the east, where, uh, for example, banks won't finance anymore. Uh, they are just waiting for the uh, buildings to be demolished. You can buy an apartment building, a whole block building for 200000 A similar block building in Helsinki would cost probably, I'd say, 10 million. Uh, so that, that is the, the issue that the, 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 uh, 
uh, in the rural rural areas in Finland, it's it's totally different. It's a totally different market. As in, uh, as I have talked with the the uh, UK country manager, he he said that like why they are in Manchester is that uh, the the market is like the London and the rest of UK, right? There's nothing in common with those markets, and I would say that uh, it's kind of the same in Finland. Uh, and, and as mentioned, it depends also what kind of investment you want to make. If you want uh, like a subtle uh, price increase of, of 1% or so, buy it from Helsinki, buy it from maybe Espoo Vanta. If you want to have a, like a, this kind of a, in shares, for example, you are investing in growth companies or value companies, right? Usually two options. Helsinki is the value company. Uh, growth companies are Joensuu, Jyväskylä, blah, 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 uh, where the price increases for older buildings are going usually down. For newer buildings, they are going up. Uh, and, but always in real estate investing, apartment investing, you have to look at the renovations that have been done. If there has not been any renovation, then it's almost like ready to be demolished. Don't buy it. <laughs> Just don't. Uh, because most probably the banks also consider it to be demolished. And quite often when we talk about, even when we talk about smaller uh, areas, uh, but especially, especially in bigger cities, we talk about apartments, but uh, should investors also look for, uh, let's say, houses, uh, even uh, in rural areas? It's, it's cheaper there. Basically, you can get a house for the same price as uh, a two-room uh, two uh, apartment in Tallinn. So is, a, is a house good, a good investment uh, either for yourself or as to rent it out, maybe, do you think? Liquidity of uh, ho houses rental market is very low mm. in uh, in Estonia. People who want to live in house, they are buying house. But it's uh, there is market of uh, rental uh, houses. Maybe for Airbnb, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, this is one uh, one option. Rental market is existing, but it is uh, small and uh, and uh, that's not my first uh, suggestion. Yeah, I would say, I mean, <clears throat> very similarly, like if you want to live in a house, buy a house, right? But house also comes with bigger maintenance costs and it's not as, well, nearly as liquid as apartments, especially if you're looking at, you know, an apartment in the city center versus a house, which is probably on the outskirts, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say it's better than to uh, go for, let's say, one or two apartments than spend all that money on a single house as well. So you're div diversifying that way, in a sense. Yeah, uh, I think almost everything that I also wanted to say has been already said about houses. Just don't. Uh, so the, the one thing is that uh, in Finland, as we have the housing company system, it's actually a pretty good in that sense that if you're buying an apartment in an apartment building, there are, let's say, 100 apartments and the, there's a housing company. There's also a housing company manager that is almost an equivalent to a, like a CEO in a regular company who is taking care of, of the, the property, uh, maintaining its value, taking care of uh, and making sure that all of the renovations are being done. And, and actually, a housing company operates as a regular company. There are like uh, annual general meetings, uh, board meetings, and so on. And they are like making all of the decisions. So buying an apartment as an investment, you can be pretty sure that it's being taken care of. Not only by you, but also because you only have to care about the indoors. Uh, if, if you have to change the flooring, just do it. Just pay for it, 2000 whatever. Uh, but but uh, like the big things, pipings, uh, facade, etc., those are being taken care of by the housing company. Yes, in the end of the day, you will be paying that, uh, like, uh, that housing company loan or something like that. But that's only a good thing. Usually the... The value of the apartment and the whole building is increasing as, as the renovations are being done. We have talked about it a little bit, but maybe we can get some new ideas and also emphasize some older ones. Uh, what are the latest and the best trends in real estate right now? What are the, what are the trends? One uh, trend we are uh, seeing in Estonia is uh, that the uh, rental market is expanding. Why it's expanding, there are extra 40,000 uh, people in Estonia, Ukrainian uh, refugees. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, ratio, bit, uh, uh, ratio of uh, salaries and prices is not uh, so good anymore. Uh, affordability of uh, 
uh, housing is uh, going down, uh, it is more and more difficult uh, uh, to afford uh, buying a house. Actually, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, sa same thing. Both uh, both are same uh, thing. And uh, from mm, general perspective, I'd say that's not good trend. But from uh, investor side, it's uh, market exp uh, market is expanding. Uh, but uh, just to you know, maybe expand on it a little bit, uh, when it comes to the apartments and, and uh, real estate, uh, what kind of apartments are the new uh, trend right now or the, the best to, to buy right now? Two, three bedroom, two or three room apartments, older or newer ones, or maybe something like that? In Tallinn, uh, uh, Tallinn apartments with uh, lower. Uh, rental price than uh, five six hundred euros. Uh, there are tens uh, uh, phone calls, hundreds of emails, uh, uh, when so, uh, uh, such kind of apartment is coming to the market. But uh, when looking at let's say uh, because real estate is a long term investment, let's say mm -hmm. look at look at the trend of ten years. Uh, if you're looking at a ten or even longer uh, year horizon. Uh, what should you uh, buy then? Because right now we have the Ukraine crisis, people are coming in. Uh, at, at one point they will probably leave, uh, but then, and then we have to focus on the people who live here uh, permanently. So mm. uh, what kind of uh, apartments are, they, are the people uh, here uh, looking for, for a longer time? The biggest mar market share is two-room apartments, where competition is uh, the highest one. Uh, I don't know anyone who has uh, small apartments, uh, 12, 20 square meter apartments. I don't know uh, sad uh, apartment owners of such uh, kind of apartments. Uh, and bigger uh, uh, three room, four room apartments, uh, the market share is uh, smaller because of uh, higher uh, uh, rental price, but there is demand. Actually, I have bought uh, four room apartment uh, uh, waiting uh, construction uh, will be completed in maybe in June, maybe in August. Uh, David, Matti, what kind of uh, trends do you see and, and what, what are the best investments? Uh, what kind of apartments? Maybe? Yeah, well, uh, I, I'd say the same things in a sense. Uh, first of all, you said that there's no like uh, sad two, uh, two room apartment owners. Well, the old saying, as, especially in Finland, is that it's nicer, nicer to cry in a two room apartment than a, than a <laughs> studio apartment. Uh, but um, the thing is that uh, how I would do it, for example, is that like uh, in certain regions, in, in, uh, especially Helsinki, uh, as the need for apartments is, is higher, uh, especially during COVID. I, I think COVID was a, like a water divider here. People uh, tended to buy those studio apartments, uh, 20, 30 square meters, and they went like this on the market. And I'm, I'm talking about hours, not even days. Uh, then came the uh, like two room apartments for for a couple or or like uh, something uh, and they, they started to uh, go like really rapidly and now in certain areas uh, in the city center and, and especially like in the let's say not even suburbs but but somewhere there in between uh, people are asking for three or four room apartments because if you think uh, like uh, from studio apartment uh, when you uh, move together with, with your spouse or something like that, most probably you have to move to a bigger apartment, right? So again, two-room apartment, really good thing. But especially during COVID time, usually you have the bedroom and you have the uh, living room slash working room nowadays. So people want to have a separate working room, right? Uh, and and the, that talks for the three-room apartments. And, and again, if you own a three-room apartment, uh, that also means that if uh, the couple would move, move out and you own it and you will rent it out, uh, you can rent it to students. There's three separate rooms. Uh, so it's always usually a, a good investment. Uh, if you would have asked me three years ago, I would have said that studio apartment or two-room apartment, and that's it. Don't touch two, three-room apartments. Now I'm saying that actually, <laughs> uh, we can also see the price increase in those three-room apartments, uh, whereas the one- and two-room apartment uh, prices are, are pretty much the same. 
and, and uh, looking at the square meter prices, actually, uh, it's like a U curve, uh, if you look at that. Usually, uh, one room apartments, the demand is so high that the uh, square meter prices are really high. Uh, same with the two room apartments, but usually a bit lower. Uh, three and four room and plus, uh, they are like uh, a bit lower. So there's a room for increase, how I see it from the investment perspective. But at the same time, like uh, the more you have square meters, usually, because you are paying anyways for the facilities in a sense, uh, toilets and, and whatnot, and those are common for studio apartments, uh, two room apartments. But for three or four room apartments, you still have the same facilities, but more like that kind of room that is uh, cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand there are a lot of people interested in real estate investment here. Maybe we can also take a few questions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, one person here. I remind you also that uh, we will also be giving away books for the best uh, questions. So here we have one. Yes, thank you for the very interesting discussion. Uh, Mighty, you mentioned that uh, some of the real estate uh, buyers in Finland have kind of over leverage with consumer debt. And I wanted to ask about the Estonian market. Do you think there's some type of over leveraging? Uh, and do you expect some higher percentage of foreclosures coming in the next two years or something? I don't know. <laughs> uh, can't say. I don't have uh, any information. Uh, there are there, there might be cases of uh, over leverage, but uh, 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 let's say. Uh, ratio between uh, housing transactions and housing loans has been stable uh, last 12 years. So uh, if there are over leverage, uh, this is not systematic like it was in 2006, 7, 8. It's not systematic uh, problem of uh, uh, property market. But most probably there are people who have uh, too high uh, loan burden, but how, how big uh, this problem is, uh, probably not too big. Uh, number of loans, uh, overdue loans, I'm talking about housing loans, and amount of uh, overdue loans has gone down uh, last five, seven uh, years, in, uh, and also during uh, Corona in 2020. So it's not a systematic problem. So any more questions? I can see a girl with a red head. Thank you. Uh, I have a question that uh, do you recommend uh, uh, rather multiple smaller apartments or a bigger one, like uh, three rooms or four rooms, if you had to choose multiple or one? Multiple, <laughs> smaller ones. You have less risk, and it's also more liquid. So. It depends uh, on your investment strategy. Uh, I uh, agree with uh, David uh, that uh, more uh, liquid, uh, higher uh, return, but uh, I bought uh, four room apartments uh, in plural, uh, uh, less uh, management, lower management uh, costs, and uh, uh, this is not my, uh, my basic activities. I like to be a real estate analyst uh, and being investor is uh, like hobby. And that's why bigger apartments, I have one, uh, one room apartment, uh, others are uh, all bigger. And uh, one, uh, uh, one room apartment was bought uh, in 2020. It was opportunistic uh, purchase. Mm -hmm. We have some more. Uh, we have a gentleman at the back. Oh, maybe they're right here, as well, let's say here. <laughs> I think it's a bit first. Thank you very much uh, for the uh, interesting discussion. Uh, my question would be, uh, I guess, to all the panel. Um, so for uh, stocks, you have many ways and many metrics to judge if your uh, investment is uh, still good in the uh, running sense. What would be some of the ways to judge if your real estate investment is still good or maybe to look at some of the things that how you know when there's time to maybe exit that market or, or dump that uh, investment. Thank you very much. Uh, cash flow, only thing, cash flow. Is cash flow enough to cover uh, expenses and is cash flow reasonable? 
no, no other metrics. I, 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 I can't see. And uh, maybe, okay, maybe there are problems with uh, technical problems with uh, property. And uh, there is always, uh, if there are problems, it always uh, uh, there is a possibility to exit to sell the property. But cash flow uh, should be re reasonable, and uh, that is what I am looking for. Yeah. Uh, why I wanted to give this answer to you is that because that is that is a universal answer. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Uh, that that's the thing, and, and what I urge every one of you to do uh, is is also to learn the definition of cash flow. What does it actually mean? How do you calculate it? So that uh, I can break into your home and wake you up at night and ask you how does how do you calculate cash flow? That's the level of what I want all of you to understand the cash flow with. Because, for example, in the school of economics where I went to, for Four years out of five years, we only calculated mostly cash flow. That's how important it is. It doesn't matter if it's an apple, if it's an apartment, if it's a real estate, uh, if it's uh, my little company uh, uh, generating 30,000 in revenue, cash flow is cash flow. You can calculate it with the, the sa same way always uh, from the in income statement. Uh, and and the th one, one thing is that you can, if you are calculating a plus cash flow, you just add zeros, right? So that's the easy way. But learn cash flow, the definition of, of cash flow, Google it, uh, use those. There are a lot of good YouTube like uh, videos about that. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. That's the main thing I want to say. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time for now. I'm pretty sure that uh, if you come uh, to our presenters uh, during our break, uh, they will be happy to uh, answer any more of your questions. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Donald, uh, David, and Matti. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.